In this tutorial, what we're going to do is look at how to actually draw text in Pygame. So before we can do this, we're going to need to start by picking up a template file that we'll use for today. So you can get a copy of that here from the week seven lesson by right clicking, going down to save as. And what we're going to do is I'm going to navigate into my H drive, into my computer science folder, year nine, Pygame, and I'm going to call this one uh, week seven template. I've uh, named all mine as I've gone along to make them a little bit easier to uh, be able to find if I ever need them again. So I'm going to click on save and that's now ready to use. What I'm going to do next then is I'm going to load up PyCharm. So I'll click on start in my case and I'll do that. So you can click start and type PyCharm or you've got a link on your desktop that you can use as well. Once PyCharm's loaded up, what I'm going to need to do is to uh, open up the project that I'm using today. On yours, it might come up with a big window in the middle of the screen saying, what would you like to do? Uh, or after a few seconds, indeed, here comes mine now, actually, it's just being a little bit slow. Because I've been working on mine previously, uh, it's already showing me all my work down the side. But what you'll probably be able to do is click on File and Open and it'll sort of show you the contents of your computer just here. And you'll want to go into your H drive and you'll be able to see everything from there. So that's what you'll do. Here we go, H, computer science. Goodness, mine's slow today. And there's week seven there, so I'm going to open that up. So it should take a second. There it is, looking good. Okay, so uh, this is the template file, and we're going to be making some modifications to that. So let's see what to do first. If you're going to make text appear in Pygame, what you need to do, first of all, is to start off by actually loading the font that you want into memory. I'm going to use Arial today, but you could use anything that comes up in Microsoft Word. I'd recommend while you're experimenting, sticking with Arial, uh, but uh, once you make that work, change it to something else by all means. Once you've done that, what we're going to use is we'll actually create a function for drawing text because we have to use these three lines each time we want to draw some text. So it's a bit more efficient to put this inside a function. So whenever we want it, it'll do it all for us automatically. The function uh, effectively just tells the computer what uh, font we want to use, the one we've just loaded, the size of the font, you'll be able to change that for yourself, and then we create something called a text surface where we, uh, we choose things like the colour that we're going to write with, and then finally once all of that's put together we'll blip the screen, that's where we actually load the graphics that we want onto the screen, uh, we also give it a set of coordinates where we want to draw the text as well. So in our first example we'll put it 100 pixels across, 100 pixels down from the top. What we then do with that function written is we'll actually draw the text. So we'll write some code inside the game loop in which we'll call our function. That's the term we use in programming is this idea of calling functions to make them do something once we've made them. So let's write some code. So the first thing from my collection then was to actually load the font into memory. And that's this line of code just here. So I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to pop that up at the top somewhere near around about line 18. So if I actually turn on line numbers, I can do that by right clicking just here, turning on line numbers like that. Is that line 18 here just outside the game loop? And I'll pop that in just under there. That'll do nicely. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Right, what's my next thing that I need to do? Well, from our list, we're going to need to build the function that's going to allow us to draw some text. So what I'm going to do is grab this text just here. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to grab that. That's my function definition. That's explaining how to draw that. I'm going to copy that. And functions always sit at the top of our program. So that's going to sit up here. I'll just leave a little blank line to break that up a little bit. I'm going to pop that in here. So that's that function defined and ready to use. What I can now do then is I can actually make some text. So I've got to do that by calling the function. So I'm going to ask it to write the words good morning Dave. That's a little movie reference there, you might spot that. Uh, I'm going to take that and I'm going to pop that inside the game loop. That's the actual place where I'm going to draw this. Because I need to remember I've got to draw that text onto the screen 60 times a second. Otherwise you simply won't see it. So you'll notice here in about line 31, says your code starts here. And I'm going to paste that line of code in just there. In order for this to run, I've got to also remember, just like you've done in all the other lessons, that because it's part of this game loop, it's part of this loop, it's got to be indented into the screen to be able to work. So I'm going to use the tab key just above caps lock to indent that and bring that in. So let's run that code and see what it looks like. It's the first time I've run this program today, so I'm going to click on run at the top on the menu, come down to run, and I'm going to tell the computer that what I'd like to run is this thing here, this week seven template. Okay, so I'm going to do that. It'll take a few seconds, but if we're lucky, there we are. Good morning, Dave. There it is, loaded up just there. 
on the screen. Perfect. Okay, well at the moment what we've really got is a function which when we run it will always draw any block of text we want at exactly 100 pixels across or 100 pixels down on the screen. It would be nicer if our text draw function was a little bit more flexible, if it allowed us to also set an X and a Y coordinate that we want to draw our text at. So let's do that. Let's, so this is why coding is great. We can modify the function we wrote previously to do that. So let's think about what that should look like. So this is the function definition that we had before, uh, except we've got something new. We're saying that this time as well as telling you the text I'd like to appear, I'm also going to give you the X and the Y position. And whereas previously, so all this is the same, well, there's the font, there's the font size, you'd probably change that later, you'd have that up here. Um, there's the, the colour, you could bring that up there as well. And uh, what I've also changed as well is this bit, so screen blit, uh, the text surface, which is all of this, uh, but now we're also going to say I'd like you to draw it at whatever X, Y position I specified. Let's just take a second and compare that to before. So before I said on that line, screen blit text surface 100, 100, it was always, always, always there. So that's been swapped with X, Y position, so I can feed in the coordinates I want to use. Easiest way to make these changes and make these updates is probably just to grab that entire function, the modified version, and to copy it, uh, and then to go into here, take the previous function out, just going to delete it, and then paste the new one in a little bit like that. So that's there, it's going to sit there real nice now. Now, at the moment, if I try and run this program, it's now going to crash. And it's going to crash because all of a sudden, when I say, good morning, Dave, and I ask you to do that line of code, um, the function is expecting to be given some coordinates. I'm not currently doing that. So it's going to crash right now. Here we go. So clicking on the play button, give it a few seconds. The computer starts to have a little think. And here we go, I've got an error message. Uh, in actual fact, Python is doing its best in computer language to tell me what the problem is. Uh, it's saying we've got a type error, the text draw, that's my function. Text draw takes two arguments and I've provided one. So this parameter here, that's called an argument. There's one of them, it's expecting something else. So let's give it that. So let's give it a set of coordinates. Uh, maybe I'm gonna put it 600 across, that's down, isn't it? Maybe 60 down. Uh, at about 400 across, something like that. That's my uh, my X Y position. I'm even getting some lovely syntax highlighting here as well to actually say that the computer understands what I'm trying to achieve. So that's going to be really really helpful. Let's run that. That's my dishwasher beeping. There you go. And surely enough, it's appeared um, 60 units across, 60 pixels across, and 400 pixels down from the top. So let's keep going with this. Where do we take this next? Well, uh, we've, uh, we've made this change here. That's the next part of the code, like so. Well, from this point onwards, it's time for you really to have a little go at doing some batch tasks for yourself. So let's think about what we'd like you to try and do. Well, the first thing you can do just to get to grips with it is have a go at using text to draw a little bit more to draw some more text at different points on your screen. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do it, but what I can tell you is you're probably going to need a few more lines a bit like this down here somewhere, just with different things in here. I think that's a fairly reasonable outcome, so I'm hopeful you'll be able to do that. Why it starts to get more interesting is in the gold and the platinum tasks instead. They require you to think about things that maybe we've done in this lesson but in a different way, and in the platinum task, you'll have to look at some things we've done from previous lessons. So that's quite challenging as well, about splicing those different ideas together. To get the gold badge, you need to add another parameter, one of the arguments to your function, but this time to control the size of the text. And then once you've done that, just to prove that it works, uh, draw some words small, medium and large, one below the other on the screen, each one in different sizes. So the word small will be tiny, the word large will be huge. You get the idea, and I'd love to see your code for that. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to do it because it's a badge task, but I would guess that in order to do that, you're going to have to modify this function definition here a little bit and think about what does what. And what you'll probably need to do as well is to modify the way you use the function down here to take into account those extra details you've got. If you really want to show off, you could also add another parameter, perhaps, to allow custom colours to go in as well. That's not in the badge task. I'll just be impressed if you can do that. The final one, the platinum task, asks you to actually uh, make a mouse click counter. So you've got some text, and the text isn't just good morning, Dave. Uh, it's instead going to be how many times you click the mouse. So you could try and do that. 
or alternatively you could try and make it so you have some text that's on the screen but that it moves across the screen. We might have done something similar to that with shapes in a previous lesson so perhaps you could recycle that idea to get that to work. So good luck with that and I'll see you in the next lesson.